So Bitcoin had a pretty red day today, and I'm going to get into what happened there. But first I want to apologize in my last video. My mic settings were a little screwed up, so it had a little bit of an echoey sound. Hopefully it's fixed now. I'm back on the Raspberry mic, so hopefully I sound a little bit better, not quite as echoey. But uh, yeah, Bitcoin fell today on some FUD. I had also broke this, uh, you can see it better on the hourly. It broke this uh, support here. And now we're deep into this blue area here for the Fibonacci retracement. So what happened here was there was some FUD in the news. Uh, we'll get into that. As you can see, the Ethereum didn't move at all, didn't budge. EOS popped a little bit today. They had a hackathon in Sydney. Uh, I'm not sure if that's why. I didn't see anything in, in the social media about why EOS pumped a bit today, but that's good for EOS holders. Some of the other ones, XLM, Cardano, just flat, pretty flat. Um, but Bitcoin fell pretty significantly. Uh, I wouldn't be, I would anticipate this is going to come all the way down to this, where I drew this, I uh, actually drew this several weeks ago before this took off here. And a lot of people, a lot of chartists and technical, technical now, technical and analysts <laughs> say that three times fast all said that it needed to come all the way down back to this phase two line this would be considered a phase two line of uh, hyperwave if you follow hyperwave which basically says all bubbles go in a um, in a particular pattern very long-term pattern and for it to continue on its path it needed to come down to this phase two line I won't be, you know, I've been dollar cost averaging, I'm big on dollar cost averaging, so if you've been following along with that, you really can't go wrong, uh, especially today if you buy on it, it's always good to buy on a red candle, not on a green candle, but I think it may come down more, so I, you know, I would stop buying here until it shakes out a little bit more, because you can probably get it a lot cheaper in a few more days. Actually, this is going to go into... This may go into October. So you can keep buying, you know, dollar cost averaging, or just wait, wait for it to come down to this line, which you put it around 60, 51, 65, if it hits that line. But typically with Bitcoin, people try to get ahead of it, and I'll, I'll always see it kind of take off right before a significant number. Because, like I said, uh, there's there's tons of people waiting to buy it cheap. Uh, I don't care what these people say. You know, if you look in the news, there's a lot of FUD recently. Uh, this article here, Goldman Sachs, cryptocurrencies will not retain their value, and they're saying it doesn't deserve the media attention it's been receiving, which is really ridiculous considering cryptocurrency, Bitcoin itself, is the most significant advancement technological advancement since the internet and uh, why that wouldn't deserve media attention I don't know that escapes me maybe people that don't understand it uh, feel threatened by it or don't understand that they that when they buy it they really don't have anything of intrinsic value not realizing that if uh, the world currency is starting to gravitate towards digital and basically your fiat is digital anyway. This Bitcoin is just an easier way to make those transactions. The problem is the, the storing of it and the, the technical know-how because it's not, it's not widely adopted commercially. So users are having to you know, learn how to manipulate it, how to store it, how to protect it. But that, uh, that's quickly going away now that these institutional companies are coming on board and, and making it easier for their customers to buy it. Uh, there's this uh, ICE, which is the um, Intercontinental Exchange, which is a Fortune 500 company that deals with uh, exchanges and markets. 
they've announced that they creating a new company called Backed, a global platform for ecosystem for digital assets. So they're going to make it easier for businesses and investors to buy and store their crypto without having to deal with the whole technological aspect of it. They're partnering with Starbucks, so now you can use your cryptocurrency to pay for your Starbucks coffee. They've teamed up with uh, Microsoft's venture capital arm. A lot of other venture capitalist companies are investing in this. So, you know, why would these people be investing in something that they don't feel is going to be significant in the new financial era? So there's some other news here. This guy here says uh, Bitcoin is very iffy right now. So so who is he? He's, he's a New York Stock Exchange trader. They asked him about the ISA announcement. Uh, and he went on to say, I don't know. I think it's a stretch. Bitcoin is just iffy right now, at least according to the traders I speak to. They're really not going to get all in. And I think that's the trouble with Bitcoin. How do you protect your Bitcoin? These wallets seem iffy at best. I'm not sure why this is news, but what are you going to do? These um, these journalists, they have to spit out this stuff. So, yeah, so two, two negative articles. I'm not sure if that's directly uh, why the price fell, but I would continue. I would think it would continue to fall just based on how that candle looks uh, throughout the weekend before we can see it recover. So if we look at all the cryptos at coin market cap, you can see a lot of red. If we sort by the greens, we can see we got um, Moac here at the top, Denta coin. You know, you'll always have your your choice coins that do well even in a, on a red day with uh, really no rhyme or reason to it. Ethereum Classic had a pump today because it's getting closer to being uh, released in Coinbase. Coinbase made an announcement last month that they would be adding Ethereum Classic. So anytime we see a new coin being added to Coinbase, we always see a nice pump, which we did. We saw a pump in Ethereum Classic last month, and, and now that they're announcing it's starting to come closer to uh, actually happening and being released, we're seeing a little bit of uh, a pop from that. So that explains that. Everything else is in red. There was something I saw with Bitcoin. Somebody made a comment on Reddit. That was interesting. So what I like to do is I go over to uh, social and I just kind of see what's what people are saying. So where's the one that I saw? So here's, here's one that's interesting. Here's a quote. Bitcoin has the potential to become the first worldwide currency, and we're trying to make that happen. That's the Intercontinental Exchange founder and chairman, CEO Jeffrey Sprecher. Sprecher? Sprecher. Anyway, it's, it's hard to believe you got one, you know, Goldman Sachs saying something extremely negative, and you have someone else from, you know, a major uh, exchange Fortune 500 company saying the exact opposite, so it, it makes you it makes you wonder, it makes you wonder like uh, you know last year we had that Jamie Dimon, who's the uh, CEO of Merrill Lynch, made some very negative comments about Bitcoin, saying that anyone who invests in it would it would end badly for them, and that that tanked the price almost immediately, and at the very bottom. We saw a lot of the buy orders were coming from, you guessed it, Merrill Lynch. So these guys like to play games. So here's the one that I saw that was interesting. I don't buy Bitcoin to become wealthy. So let's see this. I don't buy Bitcoin to become wealthy. I buy Bitcoin to avoid becoming poor. There is a big difference as most people will learn in the coming years. Like my friend said, whenever someone asks me, why are you buying Bitcoin? I say, I'm not buying Bitcoin, I'm selling dollars. And I understand what he's trying to say, because he's got a lot of negative comments, uh, people that are you know, against Bitcoin, had some nasty things to say. Uh, but I understand what he's saying, because uh, the dollar, due to inflation and the cost of living, is going to go down over time. 
All right, we know this. This is this is a fact. Even though we have one of the strongest currencies in the world, and many people from other countries uh, that their currency isn't so great, they're from poorer countries. They they say, why would you say something like this? I would love to have dollars, but. The idea being is that Bitcoin is going to be the future and Bitcoin will eventually uh, compete, if not replace, fiat as the currency of choice in the world, not just the U.S. Because remember, we have, to, we have exchange fees when we send money overseas or when we travel with cryptocurrency. You don't have to worry about that. So it makes sense that crypto is going to take over at some point, at some point. There's gonna be a lot of resistance, but a lot of the banks are coming on board. They're coming on board, they're hiring cryptocurrency experts, they're coming out with their own products. We see the news articles every day. We went over one of them today. So I understand what he says, uh, when he says he, he buys it to avoid becoming poor, or just to maintain, that's if uh, Bitcoin doesn't do as well as a lot of the proponents say it will do. If it does as well as some of them say, then yeah, you will become wealthy if you're holding enough of it. But if it just uh, if it doesn't do as well, not if it just keeps going down, but maybe if it's flat, yeah, it will be better than holding the dollar. But of course, no one can predict the future. We can only make educated guesses based on how we see the trends uh, going forward so that's it that's all I really wanted to say about that yeah so that's all I really wanted to say about Bitcoin today and this the price falling uh, so that's it keep the faith don't let this uh, red candle shake you out whenever Bitcoin falls there's a ton of people just waiting to buy it at good prices until eventually we're up here to 20,000 again so stay profitable, my friends. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you in the next video.